Okay, tutorial number three. I've decided in this one we're going to make a game. Yes, we're going to make a game in only three tutorials. This isn't going to be a crazy, amazing, special game, but um, it's still going to be a game nonetheless. And the idea of the game is that we, the player, need to move from one side of this little arena I made to the other side. Now, to get this little arena, all you have to do is delete all the white cubes in the map and then just take these and turn the X scale up to about 200. And then you'll have these giant things that stick out. Um, <laughs> and there you go. You're now on the map. Um, you'll also notice that the actor we made is now a rock. All I did to do that was I clicked on it, went to the My Mesh, and then used the SM Rock um, static mesh. And also... <coughs> Sorry. Also, my rock moves from side to side, instead of up and down. All I've done is I've went into the code, and I said, instead of moving the z-axis, move the y-axis. And I've moved it at a scale of 600, which means that it moves a lot faster. What I want it to do is I want each rock to be programmable at a different speed. So you choose the speed. Instead of having this fixed 600 speed, you can actually choose the speed. To do that, I'm going to make a U property edit anywhere, which means that we can change this value in the editor. So a U property edit anywhere float speed scale. And by default, I'm just going to set this equal to 0.0f. Oh, actually, uh, we won't define it there, we'll define it in our constructor. So we'll say speed scale equals 0, 0.0. Um, and then move this at speed scale. Okay. So, now we can actually input our own speed. So if I drag another one in here, if I just compile this. We now have this thing here, speed scale. So I can choose this. If I want to make this uh, 2000, which will just make it go crazy fast, but why not? Let's just make it go at 2000 uh, and hit play. As you can see, it goes crazy fast and really far. But I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this one at 600. So that's cool. We can now spawn in multiple rocks, and each rock can have its own value. If I copy and paste this, I just hit Control C, Control V to make another rock, and I put this one over here. I can maybe make this one move at 200, and this one will still be moving at 600, so each rock now has its own scale. So as you can see, we have a fast moving one, and the idea of this game would be to run through the level and dodge all the rocks, and I'm going to obviously spawn a lot more rocks in. But right now, if the player gets hit by a rock, nothing happens. We don't get moved back to the start of the level or anything like that. So um, let's make that happen, let's add that. Uh, thing in. So to do that we're going to be using this box that surrounds the rock and use that as a trigger. So to do that we need to change some of the um, boxes things here. So I feel like root is a bit of an undescriptive word. I'm gonna call this box. That's probably a little bit of a more descriptive name. Root doesn't really make too much sense. So I'm gonna change that to box. You guys don't have to do this but uh, I'm just going to do this to clean things up a little bit. So there you go, box. Now, the way that it works is when the player overlaps the box, so is hit by the box or hit by the rock, then we can teleport them back to the start of the level. And in fact, um, did I add the player's start location? No, I haven't. Okay. So since we're teleporting the player back to the start of the level, which is right here, we need to make a vector that holds the location of the start of the level, right? Um, just to clean things up a little bit. So right now the player's at the start of the level, and their location is negative 2041, negative 99, 235. 
So I'm going to put this in here. So um, I'm just going to make a vector. If vector player starting location equals if vector. Negative 2041 float, negative 100, and then 235, I believe, were the coordinates. Uh, yep, those are where we need to be. So, so now, when the player is hit by a rock, we can say, teleport the player back to player starting location, and that'll put the player back to the start. So that's fine. What we need to do now is generate overlap events for the box. To do that, all we need to do is say box b generate overlap events equals true. So now when the box overlaps the player, it's now actually going to generate these events for us. What we need now is the trigger overlap and um, trigger exit overlap events. Now I'm going to copy and paste these in here because I never like writing these out, but I will put them in the description so you guys can also copy these, or if you want to you can just type them out, but they are quite long. Um, so here is the two functions, and these are U functions. And really we don't need trigger exit actually, we're just going to have trigger enter. So when the player enters the trigger, the trigger being the box that surrounds the rock, we then know, okay, so the player's been hit by the rock, let's teleport them back to the start of the level. So, uh, let's link this trigger enter function to our box. To do this, uh, we need to say box on component begin overlap dot add dynamic. Don't worry if it doesn't pop up by the way in IntelliSense. This a my actor whoops and then trigger enter. Okay. Now uh, all I'm going to do is Mm -mm. I don't know if I want to change the size at all. Let's let's change the size just a little bit. You don't really have to do this. I'm going to do it anyway. So uh, if vector box size equals if vector, I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. So 1.5, 1.5. One point five will do fine. Now in our constructor, we're just going to say box set relative scale three D, and then set that to box size. So we're now changing the size of the box just so it's a little bit bigger, because uh, I feel like it's slightly too small right now. Okay, so we've now linked this trigger enter function to our box, so that when the box hits the player, trigger enter actually happens, right? But we haven't actually made the trigger enter function yet. So to do this, I'm just going to copy the function, paste it in here, and then since it's a member of this class, I need to say a my actor. Okay, and I'm going to add a wee comment here. When player is hit by the rock, teleport them back to the start. And now we can add some code that actually does that. And all we're going to do is say other actor, set actor location, player starting location. And that just teleports the player back to the start of the level. So, uh, oh, and by the way, you're probably thinking, what is other actor? Well, triggers are set up so that when the player walks into the trigger, the player, in this case, is the other actor. So we're saying, in this case, the player, set the player's location to the player starting location. If I just run this, let's make sure this works. Let's make sure that when I actually get hit, 
I get teleported back to the start and something went wrong here let's just check what happened uh, box conflicts with struct to find an object it might not like the name of uh, box let's have a wee look here uh, I'll just call this T box or trigger box maybe then it won't have any problems uh, okay looks like everything's fine now hopefully that should compile now let's go ahead and try compile that there we go guys so all I had to do was just change the name, it didn't like the name box but uh, without further ado let's try see if it actually teleports us back to the start and there you go so if we get hit by a rock it actually teleports us back to the start so we've now made a really basic game and that's pretty cool actually um, so I'm gonna make another actor class now and this actor I'm gonna make is one that floats the opposite way right so instead of moving this way it moves this way just to add some complexity to our level um, I don't really want to spend ages placing these rocks because I feel like I don't know I, you, you get the idea of how you could make this work but before I go I'm just gonna make a rock that moves on the y-axis right that moves this way instead of this way just to add a little bit more complexity to do that um, well we could there's a few ways we could do it actually I'm gonna do it this way Let, let's do it this way so in dot h we're gonna have boolean um, make this a u property edit anywhere boolean b moves um, y-axis by default this is going to be equal to true but we can change this to false if we want so now in here we're going to put an if statement if b moves y-axis else new location dot um, new location dot x plus equals delta height times speed scale so now we can choose if we want to move on the y or the x axis um, and I think I did everything right there so let's let's go back in here and um, compile this and this is going to be the last thing I do um, you know, you guys get the idea of how you could make this game where the, the rocks move back and forth. Uh, but the idea is just to move to the other side. And we can spawn in lots of rocks to make the, the level harder or easier or whatever. Um, but let's click on a rock here. So as you can see, it moves on the y-axis currently. If we want it to move on the x-axis, we can uncheck this box. And now, as you can see, one of our rocks actually moves um, the opposite way. So there we go guys, uh, I don't know if, ah, uh, we've got a problem, <laughs> so, okay, the, the problem right now is that the rocks are entering each other's, <laughs> entering each other's triggers, um, what I'm going to do is, I'll leave it there, in the next tutorial I'm going to go over how to make sure it's the player that's inside the, the box, but we'll do that. Uh, in a little, we'll do that in the next tutorial and we'll finish up this game. But anyways guys, I'll see you in tutorial number four.